and welcome to a special edition of Talkin' Tunes. I am your host, Frank Walsh. Thanks for tuning in today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, these two people sitting next to me should be very familiar to you, you because they have been on our show <laughs> before. And we are here to talk about a very special event that is going to be coming up on December 2nd, right here in Stoughton at the Atorhavath Congregation Synagogue. So it's going to give me great pleasure to introduce to you Rabbi Jay Hausman and one of the guests on the bill performing, Mr. Vinny Serino of the Boston Baked Blues. Well, guys, thanks for coming on today, man. A yeah, pleasure. Appreciate it. So, appreciate uh, it. Rabbi Jay, why don't you talk a little bit about this event, you know, how it came to be and uh, what's going on on December 2nd? Well, um, how it came to be is a long story. I don't know if people really want to hear that, but the Probably event is not. A, They're half asleep yeah, already. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Let's do it, Jay. Do it. I so, mentioned you two let, guys, listen, and they said, "Okay, the, click." I, the, the the reality was, I was asked if I could get it back into promoting and producing these kinds of events again because we really haven't had them here in Stoughton, generally, and at the synagogue specifically in a good, you know, eight seven, eight years or so. Right. So uh, yeah. I gave Vinny a call, um, asked if he wanted to be involved, and I don't do anything musically at the synagogue without having my man here. Amen. Go. Okay, and one of, a fellow who used to play guitar with Vinny, who's been playing with some other bands, is just uh, Greg Miller, who's just absolutely phenomenal. I Greg mean, Miller was going to be here today, and yeah, uh, he was going to play a couple of chords, play a little bit yeah. with you, yeah. but uh, you know, a little bit under the weather. But, so. but Greg himself, I mean, people need to know that this guy came in second in the King of the Blues International Guitar Competition. The, oh, guy's, hey. the guy's fantastic. He is. Um, he was my guitar player. Yeah, he is. He's yeah. great. You remember that post he has on YouTube? Yeah. I mean, he was playing on YouTube, and I never forget the first time I heard him, my daughter's in the other room, and I had this on the computer speakers, and she said, Dad, turn it down. I don't need to listen to Albert King right now. <laughs> you remember this? Yeah, you yeah, he told me I said, that it's story, not Albert yeah. King. She said, yeah, no, it's Albert King. She walks in, I said, come here, take a look. She walked into the room. She said, oh, it's a white guy playing Albert King. <laughs> I mean, he's, he is, Greg is so talented. He has his own style. And he can play other people's style as well. well so we have his band, yeah. Soul Box, will be playing. We got Boston Baked Blues playing. And our third band is really a, uh, a well-known regional act and a national for, for a while, too, yeah. the Delta Generators, right. with yeah. Brian Templeton as, as the, the, um, the, uh, the lead singer, yeah. you know. Um, just a magnificent guy. We have them coming you, in you as talk a five about, set. You talk about Greg Miller. I mean, you know, you've got, um, you know, Charlie Casey on, right. uh, on guitar. He has no sludge either. But to go back to Miller for a second is that the thing that amazed me was I think it was the one of the first ones that you had when we had, when Jason Ritchie was there. Jason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A few yeah. years ago. And that Greg wasn't the first one. That was what? That was the well, fifth four, one. Of them. Fifth, fifth or sixth. Fifth yeah. one, yeah. I was thinking the last yeah. one. But anyway, yeah. Greg was there, and uh, he was playing with Jason. And yeah. he let... Greg go off and do some yeah. solos and I remember one time I it was magical that night I don't think I have ever heard him play before or since the magic he put on that stage last night yeah, to the point where Jason yeah. Ritchie who is the preeminent harmonica player in the world yeah You're all due respect no no, no. Jason, believe me Jason he, turned he around, melted me that night <laughs> Jason turned yeah. around and bowed to him and I have yeah. it on film bowed to him and yeah. then after the show we were all hanging around he asked uh, Greg to go on tour with him. Right. He right. asked him to tour with him. He's good. Yeah. You know, so that's a good he's is. A, yeah, yeah, you know, he was Greg, playing with us that night. He was a, no, blues, he's a, he's yeah. incredibly talented. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Listen, uh, you, you know, well, welcome you're to the Greg Miller show. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Greg, but you know, that's true. Well, we've got that's Soul true. Box, and Listen, we, you know, Greg Miller's a part of Soul Box. Yeah. And just it's to his, give the folks a little history, yeah. and I'm sure everybody watching this knows, you know, they were, you know, uh, extremely talented group of musicians right. who won the uh, Boston Blues Challenge a right. few years ago and went down to Memphis and made it to the semifinals. Right. And, you know, their career was really taken off, but COVID kind of put it a It killed it. They uh, were supposed curve. to, Soul Box, people should know that Soul Box was supposed to go on a uh, tour of the eastern United States. Correct. Take the Mississippi River, 
head to the east. Yep. Okay, and and they had I don't know a forty what was it forty forty three city tour or something don't like know. that. Yeah, they had everything okay. lined up as a result. And of it all got wiped out because of the COVID panic. Exactly. Mm. But that, you, you talk about I mean they were making big big noise. Big, and they big have noise. they have a tremendous following, and I'm sure that many of them are going to be at the show. Right. Right. You know they have an, a legion of fans. But the the big band the, the big draw is going to be our closing. Not that Boston Bay Blues is not a draw right. on Soulbox, mm. right. but the Delta Generators. Brian Just, Templeton, the front man on that, is oh, phenomenal. Great. Yeah. Another well-accomplished harp player, yeah. a harmonica player. He's very good. Gr right. Great vocalist. Yeah. Um, he's got the O'Neill brothers playing with him as Charlie well. Charlie O'Neill, yeah. Right. Well, Charlie on guitar yeah, and, and brother, Rick on bass. His you know, brother on bass. I yeah. mean, uh, when's the last time you saw them? You know, Rick, Rick O'Neill, he plays bass one hand. Really? He plays yeah, his phenomenal. bass from the neck. Really? You don't see I've this. I've never seen him, to be honest with you. Oh, oh my God, treat. it's just I unbelievable. Look forward to when, it when they're on a game, like I, one of the, again, you get these seminal moments and, you know, we've all had them, but I remember being um, at a show up in um, Blues on the Range up in New mm -hmm. Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They were playing it. They were headlining there a few years ago. And they do this song called um, uh, Johnstown Flood, the day of the Johnstown mm -hmm. Flood. They can play that five minutes, seven minutes. Well, this day they stretched that out to like nine, ten, or eleven minutes, <laughs> and I tell you, if I had gone deaf at that moment, it wouldn't have bothered me. They the are that good. The beauty of blues jams band, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just keep yeah. jamming. Yeah, keep jamming. That's yeah. right. Yeah, but it's yeah, you know these, these guys with the Delta generators, they 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 played with so many people. Templeton himself, he toured with Jerry Portnoy, oh, who yeah. played the synagogue. We brought him in uh, one Jerry, year. Yeah. Okay, he's toured with James Cotton. Yep. Um, you know, he's got another side band where he's playing with Anthony Garassi and a couple of other people. Um, name of the, yeah, the proven the ones. Proven ones, ones yeah. yeah. So and he's also in studio now. I don't know if you know that he's yeah. in the studio with uh, Tony Lynn Washington. Is he? And they are She's producing. Still, yeah, really? Tony Lynn is going to be on the gig. Yeah. Tony, yeah. Tony yeah. started with me, on. Boston Baked Blues. Right Tony is gonna, I that was a surprise. <laughs> I, when I found out that this was going on, yeah. I was talking to Greg, and he was telling me what was going on. Yeah. He wanted me to film it and all that stuff. So I said, hey, I was just with Tony Lynn Washington having dinner last night. She was asking about all of this stuff. I said, what if we brought her and have her sing Fine. with you guys? And she was, he was like, do it. Yeah. So she and she, they, they're lining up, I won't tell what it is, but they're lining up a song to play with uh, Soulbox. You know, the, the good thing is um, when Vinny and Greg and I get together to produce and promote shows like this, um, you know, the, the, we developed a reputation out of the synagogue of really taking care mm. of the talent very well. Yes, no doubt. Yes. Um, no doubt. Um, he treats us aces, this yeah. guy. He's the best. Wow. Now, now you. It's, you know, let's roll back the clock a little bit. I mean, you know, you are, you know, a, uh, a blues aficionado, if you would. <laughs> and I remember the last time we were talking, even on the show a couple of times, I remember you talking about, you know, the New Orleans. I know one of your favorite bands that we had talked about were the Meters. Oh. You know, I know you love the Meters. Oh, they're great. <laughs> they're great. You know, you know it, it's funny. Speaking, you bring up the Meters. If people want to hear, really hear how talented that group of musicians happen to have been, oh yeah, um, pick up, pick up Robert Palmer's album *Sneak and Sally Through, through the, the Alley*. alley yep. Okay, and listen to that trilogy. You know, *Hey Julia*, *Sneak yeah. and Sally Through the Alley*. It starts off with *Sailing Shoes*. Yeah, he does a rework of the low, which was written by Lowell George of Little Feet. Okay, uh, they had this slow down version of it, the original. Uh, Robert Palmer because of the meters mm -hmm. and um, and um, the producer of the album sped this up and really funked it up uh, tremendously. Right. And it's the meters with, with Lowell George who are playing behind Robert Palmer on the album. Wow. Now, didn't they spawn like the, didn't the Neville brothers play with them too? Was it one of the Neville brothers well, with them? Yeah, Charles and there are a couple of them. You had Art Neville who was the f one of the founders of the meters. Yeah. Okay, and before the meters, he was Art Neville and the Neville Sounds, hmm. and okay. then it morphed into when George Porter came in and and um, and Zigaboo Modalesti came in, they ended up forming into the meters, and then off the meters, when the meters broke up, interestingly, they were they they finally 
were going to have the huge national breakthrough. They were going to play Saturday Night Live, mm -hmm. okay? But they ended up breaking up around New Year's Eve that year, oh. okay? And Art and Cyril Neville, who was with the meters as a vocalist at the time and playing percussion, they ended up coalescing with their brothers. And by the time you get to 78, you have the Neville Brothers Band. I've said, listen, I saw them too. Absolutely magnificent. Yeah. Probably one of the best live acts I ever saw. Yeah, I had the them, pleasure. Yeah, the Neville Brothers and the other great, great, probably the best rock and roll show I ever saw uh, was Little Feet. I saw them two shows. The best one was August 8th, 1977, Lisner Auditorium at the George Washington University. That night was recorded, was one of the dates recorded for Waiting for Columbus. And when you listen to that album, as they're singing at the I beginning, you know, uh, their little a cappella tune before they get into the show on the album, that was recorded in the stairwell of Lisner Auditorium, Fat Man in the Bathtub, on the album, that was from there. I'm just, just the greatest live band I ever saw in my life. You and I could go out and have a cup of coffee, just let yeah, Jay talk. talk. I mean, we could just yeah. listen to this all day, yeah. man. That's I don't good need to stuff. tell you but anything. This is, this is all what I ever do is play for 50 years. That's good yeah. stuff. <laughs> yeah. But this is what, no, but seriously, yeah. this is what, when Vinny and I are doing this, yeah. this is what we're trying to bring to the synagogue. How'd you right. guys get together? How'd you guys get together and team up? You, I you think, know, you've been I you think know, joined at the hip for a while. I went to a cigar and mm -hmm. scotch mm -hmm. event, yeah. and I heard uh, Jay was playing blues. I go, oh, you like blues? And, uh, and that was kind of the start of it. So I said, well, I got a blues band. It's called Boston Baked Blues. So he invited us to come and do a little gig at the temple. And when it was, was a this? New Year's How Eve long ago gig, was this? 2009, 2008. Something it was like very that. early on. Yeah, um, long time ago. What, what I was playing, we, we had over the system, what I was playing was, um, a, I used to collect, I, I don't really do much of it anymore, but bootleg music, and I got, a, a off the BBC soundboard, mm. okay, a Clapton show at um, the Royal Albert, Royal, Royal Albert, Albert Hall, Hall. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, uh, February 3rd, 1990, and it's called First Blues Night, or First Night Blues. The band was Eric Clapton, Buddy Guy, wow. Robert Cray, mm. uh, Johnny Johnson, who was the keyboardist for Chuck Berry, Jamie Oldacre and Richard Cousins. And they this couldn't find playing. any good guys. Huh? No, they couldn't just threw find, that Clapton couldn't find any good guys. And, <laughs> and yeah. Vinny and I, literally, Vinny came over, introduced himself, and when we started to talk, he said, we started to talk about what was playing. And, yeah. and my, my kid at the time, uh, how old was Jacqueline then, 10? She's, yeah, she's just a little girl, yeah. Yeah, nine, 10 years old. I mean, you can't take a nine or 10 year old to, to go to shows. You, you, I said, <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Doesn't company accept it? I said, I, but you know, what was I going to do? Take my kid into one of these bars where they're playing blues? He can't really <coughs> do that. No, no, you can't do that. So you can't do that. No, no, you never saw me do that. No, no, I did it. Never, you just never saw me. <laughs> and, and, and your <laughs> little girl never got up on stage and played her No, she was either. shy as <laughs> could be. <laughs> but, but, um, you know, it really led. Within a couple of days, my saying to Vinny, listen, I got a kid. I'm not bringing it to shows. Can we do, let's do something at the synagogue? And the, the event where he and I met was late October, early November. By February, President's Week in February, we put on our first blue show at the yeah, synagogue. Yeah. And what we thought yeah, was, was going to be about because you're doing it December this time, and normally you've done it in the winter. January. Yeah, yeah. usually January. Give or take, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Listen, well, we couldn't wait. Yeah, basically. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> now, you and the blues, I mean, the Boston Blues Band, that has been around forever. Boston and, you know, you, Blues You're part has of the original Boston Blues Society. Over 30 years. 30 over years. Over 30 years, and I've been running it up yeah. all the time. Now, who's kicking around with you now? You've got Skippy on the, on the drums. Skippy, I, I know that. Bobby Skippy Abu Fisher. Uh, Abuzi, uh, on bass. Um, and I've changed all the... I've still got my horn players. Uh, nice. John Vanderpool. Yeah, nice. A good trumpet and, uh, and sometimes trombone. He brings the boys. I say, John, need horn section. He shows up with the horn section. Yeah. You got a new guitarist, huh? Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Jimmy Percio. Jimmy Percio, really good. He's really good. He's, <laughs> he's going to give Miller a run for his money. He, he, I'm telling you, this he boy can. can play. He, Jimmy's, Jimmy's he blew good. me away. He filled in, subbed in uh, for Satoru Nakaraga, who yeah. used to play with me. 
Yeah. And I heard him playing. He goes, whoa. Yeah, Skip, he plays with Skippy, uh, Rick, he plays with Rick Skippy, Nesta out of Soul Skip Blocks Fisher, too. the drummer, is my music director, wow. and he plays with everybody. Yeah. He plays every night of the week somewhere yeah. with some Skippy. band. That's what he yeah. does. Oh, That's yeah. his life. I turned on my microwave the other day. Skippy was Skippy in. Skippy there was in there, right? <laughs> he was in there playing. <laughs> right. He yeah, says, "No, he, you got to hear this guy, uh, Jim Persio." Oh yeah, because we needed a sub, so I brought I him in. Yeah. And uh, that was the end of it. As soon as I heard him, it's like, you know, oh. what people don't okay. realize about Skippy, he used to play with Chuck Berry. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah. yeah he's been I mean, around. Yeah, he uh, did. He also uh, play a little bit with, with the, um, the Blues Brothers. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> uh, who are yeah. the three guys? Uh, ZZ Top or somebody? He played with somebody. He was telling me that he he rattled off a bunch mm, of names. I don't know. But when we went down Frank to Memphis, it was a true story. We we won the battle of the Blues Band. The blues thing. Band, right? We went down to Memphis too, representing yeah. the state down there, and. Um, we were, we, were, we were playing in a nightclub on stage and ZZ Top was in the audience. Really? At the end of our set, they pulled me off the stage. We're coming to Boston. We want you to play with us. Wow. I says, okay, I'm on. But when they never came to Boston, I never played with them. Wow. I, have, I can tell you story after story. Back yeah, in I the, saw them a few years ago. Uh, back. Uh, down in Mohegan. Yeah. Down back in, in the day, I went to Chicago. My wife surprised me with a... Uh, a birthday gift to go to Chicago, and I ended up playing with all these cool. bands at the Chicago Blues Festival out yeah. there. And I played with um, Sam Lay, drummer, yep. and and uh, Pine Top Perkins on piano. Oh, right. Top. I was playing with them in a jam session. At the end of the jam session, they come up to me and said, "We'd like you to front the band and go on the road with us." And I says, "Oh no, I got my own band, Boston Bay right, Blues. Right, I'm right. not going. Th that's who I play with." I'm looking back years later and go, what was I thinking? <laughs> what a <Wow>. dope. <laughs> you mentioned Pine Top, you know, Anthony Garassi, you mentioned Jurassic. Yeah. He just won uh, the Pine Top Award this year. Really? In 2023, uh, yeah. he won the Pine Top Perkins Award. Yeah. Wow. So is this going to be something for you that you're going to uh, continue? You know, I know that uh, you've we'll had a hiatus for a while. You're going to do this one. Well, and well, we'll see. We're going to have to see how this play goes. Play it by ear? You know, right. Play um, it by ears. Um, if it's successful, then we can talk. Cool. You know, we can consider what to do. Um, it's like running for president. You know, you don't say too much. <laughs> <laughs> but look, it, it we we had become. I mean, Vinny can tell you, we'd become a, a venue. We were. Yeah, we, we were attracting. Every year it was oh packed. Yeah. Every year. And 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 not just that, but and and not just musicians regionally within New England heard, but but we were getting calls. We'd go up to uh, people. He and I would. What was the name of that blues? Johnny D's. Johnny D's. In Somerville. Sure, Somerville. We would, Somerville. We, we would yeah. go to shows up there, and Vinny would. I mean, he wasn't shy and retiring. We'd go up to the stage, and what? Yeah. And there would literally be musicians who were who were frontlining at Johnny D's and say, "Listen, we've heard." That Everybody. I mean, remember when Nick Moss played? Yeah. He, wow. he went up to Nick Moss, and, and Dennis Grinling was in that yeah. night, too. Dennis yeah. Dennis Grinling, okay. great player. They were great just around. Are, they, were, they were just around yeah. here the last yeah, yeah, few they, days, a week right. or so ago, whenever. But he, Vinny went up. He starts to speak to Nick Moss, and he mentions what what we were doing at the synagogue. And and, and Grinling hears this, heard this and came over and said, yeah, he says, there's this rabbi down there who's <laughs> producing and promoting shows. And Vin, <laughs> Vinny literally said, this is the rabbi who's doing it. Wow. Yeah. We were, we were, remember, yeah. we were shocked. Yeah. Oh, that's shocked. He heard. So, that's so, you know, I mean. Everybody, I would get more people trying to get on those shows. You could only have like three or four bands maximum. Right. And people would be inundating me. Can we get on the show? Can we get on the yeah. show? I was just going to ask you about that. Um, you know, with all the bands that you do know, um, how did you narrow it down to the three that you chose? Well, well, the first two, very simple. I can't do anything without having Vinny involved. Correct. I, mean, right. I can't Make do that. Is I, always there. Yeah. All right. Number two, I can't do anything without Greg being involved. Mm. You know, I'm I'm close. I'm as close to Greg as I am to Vinny. Mm -hmm. I, I I couldn't do that. You admit that, that, that about Greg? You yeah, unbelievable. <laughs> you know, it's, it's unbelievable. I wouldn't, I wouldn't spread that around Greg, too much. Greg's a great guy. Don't <laughs> put my boy down. <laughs> you know, th then the question became. I've known Greg for years. Yeah, yeah listen. The question became, if Greg's band's opening, and Greg's was up front. He said, listen. My band has to open because people are busy. Right. We put Boston Baked Blues on second, you know, and, and okay, so what's the third band? And we were kicking around. Vinny came up with some names. Mm -hmm. 
I came up with a couple of names. And Greg said, when Tell Greg me. came up with the Delta generators, I literally said, God, I haven't heard those guys in years. I know they've been around. Mm -hmm. Okay. They're like wine, man. They just age better they're, and better and better. They're right. just they're just absolutely terrific. They like they're twice in the absolutely last, terrific. In the two or three times over mm -hmm. you know the last six months. They mm -hmm. just they just play, the Delta generators as a fi, as a as a quintet just played a very small venue down in Marshfield. Yep. Thirty people. Yep. They just blew the lid off. It's a, the the Moonlight Barn or something. Yeah, I, I yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah, out of the way place. It's like being in a living room. It's being in show. somebody's living room, you know, the place. Right. Absolutely, and the funny thing was that's always the best gigs. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now I I had never met any of the guys from the Delta Generators personally, so I'm standing I'm standing there. I was going to introduce myself. And literally, there was this woman who's talking to Brian Templeton saying, so when's the next time you're playing? He said, well, we got a, we got a gig. I, he says, I, I, December 16th or something. He said, but Greg Miller, who was supposed to be here tonight, he set us up with, uh, believe it or not, at a synagogue. Well, wasn't so, Greg there? I thought Greg went that night. He had to leave early. He had to leave early. He had to leave <laughs> early. Yeah, I thought he and so, Hans went. So I popped my head and I said, I said, Hi, yeah. Greg. I said, it's my, it's my synagogue. So it's just, I ended up spending about an hour talking with the band that night. That's you funny. Know, so. They're phenomenal. They're phenomenal. Greg, I got your back, bro. Don't worry. Even though these guys <laughs> We're are looking trash. for you, Greg. Even though you these be guys there. are trash, and you, I know you're a good <laughs> man, bro. <laughs> now, talk about this event. I know that you know you got a you got a cash bar. Right. You so got some it's, food. You it's know, talk December. A more okay. About the event. So it's December second. Yep. Okay. Um, doors will open at five thirty. First band goes on at six o'clock. Uh, the it will be Soul Box followed by Boston Baked Blues. Closing act will be the Delta Generators. It's $36 in advance, $40 at the door. Uh, there will be food for per available for purchase, mm -hmm. cash bar, beer and wine, you know, and soft drinks only, sure. again, available for purchase. If people are coming and they want to buy alcohol, no matter the age, they will have to show ID. That's just the way it is. Right, right. Um, we will have security at the event like we always do. Um, our, our sound man is Jeff Johnson out of it's Ipswich Very Bay good. Sound, Excellent. who's just one of the good guy. He, more than good. I happen to think he's one of the best in the business when it comes to sound here. He's good. Um, yeah. Again, you know, I called him up saying, listen, doing something. He said, I'm shifting my schedule. I'm coming down to do it. Right. <laughs> so uh, people. And where is this again? At Thanks, a Havoc, Vinny. I hooked Torah him up. Congregation, <laughs> 1179 Central Street in Stoughton. Cool. Tickets can be purchased. All uh, online, all people have to do is go to the synagogue's website, A-T-O-R-A-H dot org. All right, you'll come to our landing page. Just scroll down to Music Fest and click on the link and it'll bring you right to it. Good. How are we doing on time, boys? Perfect. We good? Yeah, we're good. All right. You got a little something that uh, up your sleeve that you might want to just kind of bring us out a little bit with. Um, you like a harmonica? You got some? Is that what it is? <laughs> this my I nine dollar you, I instrument. Played, I used to say I I've been doing this so long as to get on stage and go. I hey, ladies and gentlemen, can't wait you to play, play, play harmonica. Play my nine dollar instrument. This is seventy five dollars now. <laughs> 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 That's how long I've been playing. Come on, let the good. Do you know how to roll, use man. it? Uh, I, not in this key. I can't do it. <laughs> right. I can do that though. You want me to change harmonicas and do that? I just want to do no, this do, for you. No, These do musicians, come on. You talk about Jerry Portnoy. Yeah. We were good Jerry friends. Jerry Portnoy, the Jerry best. used to come over my house. We talk. I'll never forget the time he came over. And he said, "Vinny, can you help me get? Because I'm really booking is one of my fortes. Boston Bay Blues used to play 200, 220 dates every year, all over New England and across the country, right?" We played in all the major cities, and he said, "Can you can you help me uh, get a gig somewhere?" Yeah, sure, Jerry. I'll do anything for you, man. Like that, and uh, next thing I know, he's playing with Eric Clapton. <laughs> it was God I bless him, man. He, he he's can go to you, you can go to YouTube and see him. Oh yeah. Post well, that, that, oh, yeah. the last time he was on, when he was on your show, Jerry was on there with Ricky King. Yeah. And yeah. They Ricky played King some of that. Yeah, that's uh, right. They, they, they played, were, had a great night. They, they played were one great. of those standards, yeah. uh, like yeah. an Irving Balloon yeah. song that yeah. blew the place down. Yeah, yeah. It was fun. Jerry's a great player. R yeah. So anyways, Ricky, the Ricky story, King. The story is this: guitarist. Jerry was talking about, "Hey, I got this new wobble I do. It's called a jaw wobble. His jaw goes back and forth like that." 
I says, oh, wow, that's pretty good, man. Can you do this one? It's called the tongue wobble. And I don't even move. That's my tongue going like that <laughs> in the right spot. I, I learned how to do that. I used to drive the guitar players crazy because they'd be going, trying to trying lose to keep me. Up with them? They could never lose me. I just sit wow. there. Yeah, supper time and the liver. Supper time, Gershwin. <laughs> supper time and the liver is greasy. Folks, that's just a, a, a taste. A little taste. And my, my thing is this. <coughs> old harmonica players, and this is a Vinny original, old harmonica players never die. They just blow away. And that's blow what I plan away. to do. I'm going to blow away. <coughs> well, there's going to be a lot of blowing that night. Oh, yeah. And we, I tell you, well, guys, you know, it's been a pleasure. I think, as always, once you get in here, we could talk about music, talk about the blues forever. Yep. Amen. But, um, yeah. I think for the sake of time, let's just rattle off one more time. We have it on December 2nd. December 2nd, 1179 Central Street in Stoughton. Tickets available for purchase at the website atorah.org forward slash music fest. She'll bring you right to our landing page. Right, so we're gonna have, we're gonna have Vinny and the Boston Baked Blues, we're gonna have the Delta Generators, and we are going to have Soulbox. So guys, thanks for coming on today to talk about this. I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait to get behind the cameras and capture some of that for the people who can't make it. Amen. For yeah. Austerity, it's going to be some fun. And I want to thank everybody here at Smack who allowed you guys to come in, make us look and sound pretty. So until the next time, I want to wish you all a happy Thanksgiving because we probably won't yes. see you until after Thanksgiving. So stay healthy, yep. stay safe, and stay well. So for Rabbi Jay Hausman, for Vinny Serino, I am Frank Walsh. Tune in and tune on.